Hi guys, I'm Timmy Agbaji. Welcome to my show. May for this, may for this, may for that. People on social media have made so much mouth on what they would do once the lockdown is partially over or even is at all. But guess what? Nothing spectacular really happened. Apart from arrest here and there and some high risk exposure of people, especially at public places where they do not respect the social gathering and social distancing rule. But guess what? Corona has also come with yet another miracle for Nigerians. Something to be joyous about. The Nigerian judicial system has finally gone digital. Legal State has successfully held its first virtual sitting and they have sentenced a killer driver to death by hanging. Imagine me sentenced to death through a WhatsApp video call. How would you feel? I'm even imagining how the trial would have gone down. I'm guessing that it's going to be more. And guess what? A country like Nigeria where we do have good network service provision. My lord, standing here for the prosecution, I say and I submit that this driver must be used to serve as a deterrent to others and he must be punished and he must face the capital punishment. Arrest my case. Objection, my lord! Objection, my lord! You wait for like some three seconds because the other person on the other side cannot hear you till that time. Objection, my lord! Then the next thing is objection sustained. Counsel, defense, let me hear you. My lord, you should know that my client and the driver at, at fourth year, he never had a motive to do this. It's just a mere case of what you about people call Akoba Adaba Omajari. Counsel! This is my judgment. Then everybody keeps quiet because before they even hear the this is my judgment part, it takes some three more seconds on the other side because of the network they might be using. I'm guessing that at that point of the judgment, there will be network failure at that point. And the only thing that the accused person will hear is hanging. You just say hanging, hanging. And the network at that time will also hang. Amidst this COVID-19 pandemic and wahala, three men have been arrested and one of them has been sentenced to prison in Kaduna. Guess what he did? He insulted Muhammadu Buhari and Governor Aminu Masari of Kaduna State. These men were arraigned for inciting civil disobedience and also disrespect to authorities through demeaning utterances. It simply means that I'm talking to you. You that are watching this video, I'm talking to you. If you ever call our own great and patriotic president, Sinzu, Spendi, or Jubri of Sudan, or you even call him a guy at the top, I will find you myself and I will arrest you. Just last week, we were all worried that Nigeria might not have enough financial power to fight and combat coronavirus. But guess what? Nigeria's bank account was credited again, this time around, not by the IMF, World Bank, or even Bill Gates. Our grandfather, our benevolent ex-military head of state, Baba Eri Babake, a man that never fails his children, has sent us another 311 million dollars from the great beyond, as he always does. And guess what? I have my own theory to this. What if, you remember that Abayari died a week or two ago. What if Abayari went to talk to Abacha. Da, Baba, our, your boy is down there. Enugbe, we need some money. And our own Baba, our great grandfather, General Sonny Abacha, who never forsakes Nigeria where we need him the most. This time around, he came to our rescue with a whooping sum of $311 million, as I've said earlier. Now, what if it was Abayari that told him that, ah, Baba, um, Enugbe, things are for Nigeria. Corona day everywhere. Money no even they enter the country. And he said, don't worry, I got you covered. And he wired our answer. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Abayari went to a fire. I only said he went to the same place that Sonia Abacha is. Now, don't get too excited. Don't be thinking that they will share the money the way they shared the last one during the election. They said they gave it to the poorest of the poor, the disadvantaged people. That was during the election. This time around, election no deal. Nigerian pastors are back again. This time around, they are back in full force. In fact, they are making waves. First on the list, Prophet Pastor Odumeje, the popular pastor that makes everybody laugh. Oh, apologies. He has come out to say you should not call him a prophet or a pastor. Simply, he's just liquid matter. So I will just say LM Odumeje. I guess there's a position like LM now in the spiritual hierarchy. Now, he has tweeted that there is no coronavirus in Nigeria. If you look deeply, we only have businessmen. This is the same man that claimed in April that he will eradicate coronavirus before the end of April. My question is, would he try to eradicate corruption or malaria if there was no coronavirus? Second on the list, Prophet T.B. Joshua, our synagogue daddy. By now, I know you know that he has been struck with so much controversies in his career as a pastor. But it's not about that. He has done something very positive 
This time around, he went on the mountain, he went to the forest and the wilderness to pray for Nigeria. He took a step as a leader, a bold step, and he has come back after four days and four nights. If you read your Bible very well, I believe you know by now the significance of going to the forest or the wilderness to pray for four days and four nights. He has come back with a revelation, and guess what? He came with a revelation that says, lockdown is an evil spirit. However, I might not understand the full meaning or the importation of this particular revelation but i believe you're a spiritual person you understand what you have said and i hope this time around is correct because the last revelation he gave nigeria as a country as regarding coronavirus pandemic you get as it be and finally some nigerian pastors have spoken against the lockdown and ban on religious gardens especially the church they have not supported the idea one bit so far some of them have even spoken against pastors that have supported the lockdown and ban on religious gardens pastor piso yakilome just to mention a few but there's this particular video of a man of god i respect so much he is a businessman not by the virtue of what nigerians always call pastors as businessmen i mean by the fact that he has once been one of the richest pastors in the whole wide world a nigerian a positive acclamation for that matter now in this video, I would like you to examine what he has said with a very objective and plain mind. I will not make any comments because he is a man of God I respect so much, but I will leave you to make the comments yourself. For people to be allowed to be in the market yes, for six hours and can't be in church for two hours, man, it's an upside down way of looking at things. I know I said I will not make any comment on this video, but being objective, let's look at this. The lockdown does not affect just churches, it affects Muslims and mosques. It affects traditional worshippers and their shrines, then Christians and their churches. I feel that if we are fighting this coronavirus pandemic, we should all be collective and we should all stand together to condemn this virus and curb the spread of the virus. It's not all bad news. There are some good news too. I know we are all banking on the cure for Madagascar, that about drink that we all talk about. But we can only speculate for now. Until WHO confirms that it actually works and cures coronavirus, we can only be hopeful at this point in time. But let's talk about something that connects us as Nigerians, something that is closer to home. Lagos State has announced that it has discharged 60 people who have formerly tested positive for the virus but are now fully recovered and ready to integrate back into society. It might not sound much to you, but 60 people means a lot to us as a country. That means Nigeria can treat a lot of patients of coronavirus at the same time and we can still win. That's a lot of victory for us. And finally, if you have family members, friends, colleagues or relatives that work in the bank, the bankers committee have announced that they have put a hold on bank staff retrenchment. That means your friends that are working in the bank we no longer lose their jobs due to coronavirus pandemic. That's some food on the table. We should be happy for this for now. If you can all remember, a few weeks ago when Abayari died, a particular commissioner in Kano State, the commissioner of works, Muaz Magaji, he took over to Facebook and he celebrated so much the death of Abayari. He was so joyous that people felt he was speaking the mind of the government of Kano State, Gandola's people. But guess what? He was sacked and dismissed as commissioner of works in a few hours after he made that post on Facebook. Now, that's not where I'm going to. Plot twist! Plot twist! He has come out to announce that he has tested positive for coronavirus. He shocked you. I don't think he could shock you. Now, I'm not saying that Bayari has come back for revenge. I'm not saying that he stood rest in perfect peace. But you know when I was a younger boy, my mother used to say, that the God of Odin days used to take long, he catches you. But the God of these days, he calls the fighter jet, he will get you. I'm not saying that it was God that called the commissioner out. That's not what I'm saying, please, don't misquote me. I'm only saying that there was a court. In fact, see, forget about it, court. I wish the commissioner speedy and safe recovery from this particular virus. But my question and my fear is, if one man went to Facebook to celebrate Abayari's death and he contacted coronavirus, how much more the people on Twitter that actually had a party online to celebrate Abayari? What do you think? Hi, I'm Timmy Abaje. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment on it.